Hello, my name is Annika Winnett. I am an occupational therapy student at Rocky Mountain College in Billings, Montana. For my doctoral capstone project, I developed a program titled The Effects of Equine Assisted Services on Interoception, an eight-week occupational therapy program addressing regulation at the sensory level. I developed this program with Spring Hill Wellness and Interdependence Assisted. This presentation will cover what sparked my interest in developing the program and the need for the program, details on the program I developed, and the effectiveness in future plans for the program. My desire to develop an equine-assisted program targeting interoception began all the way back when I was getting my bachelor's degree in anthrozoology at Carroll College. In my equine classes, I began studying the many therapeutic benefits horses provide humans. Horses have an incredible ability to notice how humans are feeling and respond in an expressive way. For example, if I walk into the arena and I'm feeling nervous, the horse may pick up on my increased heart rate or other body signals and interpret that as nervousness. They would then react in a physical way. Their ability to pick up on subtle cues into how humans are feeling is truly remarkable. During this time, I learned that occupational therapists can use equines to assist in the therapeutic process, and this is when I first heard and learned about OT. I quickly became very interested, and that brought me to Rocky Mountain College to pursue a degree in OT. While I was in the program, I had the opportunity to research interventions for improving interoception. Now, interoception is how we connect physical body signals to our internal experiences or emotions. For example, when our stomach grumbles when hungry, or to use the previous example, when my heart rate increases when nervous. Our interoceptive awareness is our ability to first notice and then connect the body signals to our internal experience or emotion. So recognizing our stomach growling and then connecting that to being hungry. While researching interventions for improving interoception, I started to wonder if EAT could aid in improving interoception. Interventions for improving interoception revolve around immersing in sensory experiences, and equine therapy is high in sensory experiences. During my literature search for this project, I found that EAT was shown to improve self-regulation and sensory integration, both of which are a part of interoception. However, I found no research on the effects of equine-assisted services, or EAT, on interoception. So I started looking around to see if there were local organizations offering occupational therapy assisted by equines. And there are not. But my search did lead me to Caitlin Buddy, founder of Spring Hill Wellness and co-founder of Interdependence Assisted. Kate is a licensed social worker and offers psychotherapy assisted by equines in Helena, Montana. I met with Kate to determine the needs of her site and how my project could help fill a need. Some of the strengths of the site were that Kate offered a holistic approach and though she's not an OT, spoke and operated like an OT. She had a variety of equines ready to assist in therapy and access to a wonderful indoor arena. Some of the weaknesses were that it was a new small business with plenty of areas for growth, and there were, was currently no occupational therapy being offered. The opportunities the site offered were the desire to incorporate interoception and the chance to work with family units and groups. The only threats were safety considerations when working with equines and the need for volunteers and equine specialists. My needs assessment informed me that the clientele at the site could benefit from OT and interoception. My problem statement emerged from the lack of research on the effects of EAT on interoception. Since OTs work with people at risk of having low interoception, it is important for OTs to develop interventions targeting interoceptive awareness. Research shows that horses can help improve self-regulation and sensory integration through EAT. So EAT should then be considered as a possible intervention for increasing interoception in the occupational therapy field. And this is what I set out to do. 
So I conducted my project with Spring Hill Wellness and Interdependence Assisted in Helena, Montana. My site mentors were the co-founders, Caitlin Buddy, who provided psychotherapy assisted by equines, and Kalina Welch, who provided equine facilitated learning. My project consisted of developing an eight-week equine assisted program for improving interoception. My goal for developing an EAT program targeting interoception emerged from the need for more interventions for interoception, including within the EAT, EAT field, and from the need for there to be more OTs offering EAT. So my first goal was to develop the eight-week program. So I had to research potential interventions, create an outline of the program, and create treatment plans for each session. My second goal was to pilot the program, which consisted of recruiting participants, gathering and creating materials for the sessions, and assessing the participants' level of interoceptive awareness pre- and post-program. My third goal was then to disseminate the results of the program by first comparing the pre- and post-assessments and then creating a presentation of my findings. So I initially created an eight-week program for a group of participants. I was then provided with the opportunity to work with a few clients individually, leading me to creating a separate program to be administered in individual sessions. Both programs derived from the interoception, interoception curriculum created by Kelly Mahler, who's an OT currently spearheading interoception. The group program leads the participants through all three stages of interoceptive awareness. First, noticing personal body signals. Second, connecting those signals to the internal experience or emotions. And then third, learning how to change how our bodies are feeling through the use of regulation strategies. The individual program is a more in-depth dive into the first stage of noticing personal body signals, with each week incorporating a variety of sensory experiences that brought the participants' awareness to a particular body part, and each week covered one to two body parts. In the group program, we tackled all of the body parts in just two sessions when covering the sensory experience and body awareness. Now, both of the programs began by administering the interoception questionnaire and a body scan that served as the pre-assessments. So here is the interoceptive questionnaire. Um, we also went through an in-depth safety briefing and got to know the horses and each other. Then in the group sessions, each week began with the safety briefing, an icebreaker activity, and a body check. The participants used a body journal to help them track the body signals they noticed feeling throughout the program. After the body check, participants would then identify their current level of energy based off of what they noticed in the body check. The energy levels chart I created is modeled after the zones of regulation program that the majority of the participants were familiar with. For an example, if I noticed that my hands were shaky, skin was warm and sweaty, and heart was beating fast, then I would probably connect that to being in the yellow zone with having a higher level of energy from feeling nervous. We would then do a different activity each week that targeted interoception. One of the activities included a scavenger hunt where the participants found items around the barn and that offer different sensory experiences. And then they would um, write down how those different items made their bodies feel. We concluded each program by re-administering the interoceptive questionnaire and body scan that served as the post-assessments and additionally a satisfaction survey. After comparing the pre- and post-assessments, I found a potential increase in interoceptive awareness, but there was not a significant change in responses from the interoception questionnaire. I was more surprised to see a significant increase in descriptor words used describing body signals during the body scan. And the satisfaction, sur satisfaction surveys showed me that working with the equines were the participants' favorite part of the program. 
I coded the assessments for three types of responses. Descriptor words were responses such as my stomach growls <clears throat> or hurts when hungry. Action words were responses such as I feel like I need to eat when hungry. And no or poor responses were blank or vague such as I don't know, good or weird. The number of descriptor words on the interoceptive questionnaire did improve, but not significantly. The action words and no responses did decrease, indicating that the participants' responses became more descriptive in the post-assessment. But the number of descriptor words used during the body scan significantly increased. The bar graph shows the pre and post scores for each participant's body scan, reflecting that increase for the majority of the participants. I also counted the number of changes and responses from pre to post assessments. The positive change is responses that moved from a less descriptive response to a more descriptive response, and a negative change is any response that moved from a more descriptive response to a less descriptive response. So this program aimed to improve occupational performance through improving the participants' self-regulation by increasing their interoceptive awareness. It served as an alternative to traditional therapy and is currently the only equine-assisted OT program in Helena, Montana. Based off of the satisfaction shirt, satisfaction surveys and conversations with the participants, as well as recent referrals to the site, the Helena community is truly seeking EAT and specifically OT assisted by equines. All of the participants in the group program have asked to continue receiving equine assisted services at the site. The main impact of the program is that it did show to improve interoceptive awareness and the participants reported that they benefited from the program. This program presents Spring Hill Wellness and Interdependence Assisted the opportunity to offer more holistic services by adding OT to the interdisciplinary team. I also had many conversations with Kate and Callie about incorporating an interoceptive approach into their business model, where all services offered respects the client's interoceptive experience and does not place compliance-based standards onto the clients. The program influences the field of OT by showing the benefits of OT assisted by equines. It serves as an additional intervention for improving interoception in a nature-based and animal-assisted setting. Hopefully, this program will lead to future research and funding that will aid in making services more accessible. My hope is that an EAT program targeting interoception continues to be offered at the site and across Montana. I created the program binder filled with resources and step-by-step -step instructions on how to run the program. The program is designed to be adaptable for any population and equine facility. The project has influenced the site to incorporate an interoceptive approach and plans for future interoceptive programming are in the works. Hopefully, OT will continue to be offered at the site to serve different people and different needs. I would like to thank my site mentors, Kate and Callie, as well as um, Carol College and Dr. Marie Southers, who connected me to my site mentors and to volunteers that came and helped out. I want to thank all of the participants that came. And of course, I need to thank the all of the equines and the different animals that for, facilitated in this project. Um, I also want to thank um, Rocky Mountain College, and Dr. Nordic, and of course, my family and friends, especially my husband, Matt, and son, Gus. Thank you so much.